This video is brought to you by Helix Sleep. My Little Goat is one of the most disturbing yet powerful animated shorts I've ever seen. It was recommended to me by a friend and was available to watch for free on YouTube. Judging by the thumbnail alone, I assumed the short was going to be dark, uncanny, and gory. What horrors await this little goat character, I thought to myself. Oh, if I only knew. What ended up happening, though, was a plot twist that completely caught me by surprise. One so dramatic, yet compelling, that I wondered how it was even allowed on YouTube. Though, don't get me wrong, I'm very glad it is. I know that this platform walks on eggshells when it comes to uncomfortable subjects and would prefer to keep things light with jovial videos. But mature content takes many forms. For My Little Goat, it's about abuse, trauma, predation, and finding the strength to press on to tomorrow. From the brilliant stop-motion animation with its lighting and character design, to the narrative itself, My Little Goat left a big impression on me, and I think it's absolutely worthy of discussion and praise. How I was able to effectively tell a story with such dark and disturbing tones, yet maintain a level of respect and understanding of the weight of its subject matter. To me, this short was not made at the expense of victims, but to empower them. So, let's take a closer look at My Little Goat, and how this powerful allegory was able to successfully commentate on a very uncomfortable subject. For the record, due to the nature of the original short, this video will include heavy topics, such as child abuse and the many forms it takes. Just want to give you all a fair warning before we begin. Alright, let's do this. The creator of My Little Goat is Tomoki Masato, a graduate of Tokyo's University of the Arts, and a very talented animator and storyboard artist. According to the credits for My Little Goat, Tomoki single-handedly wrote, animated, and directed the entirety of the short, which is very impressive. It took him nearly 10 years to complete it, but the results speak for themselves. There are also other animated shorts he has worked on up on his YouTube channel, such as Candy.Zip and Look At Me Only. Stop motion animation seems to be the visual genre of choice for Tomoki and his creations. And the guy has achieved amazing results. Each respective short features a different style that resonates with its story and its themes. I mentioned that the story for My Little Goat caught me by surprise, but that was also the case with a plot twist in Look At Me Only. Again, check out this guy's channel, it's great. I was also surprised that Tomoki was the director and writer of the series Pui Pui Molkar which is a Japanese stop-motion series that features car-like guinea pigs getting into hijinks and whatnot. At first, I was like, oh, oh no, what's about to happen to these guinea cars? But the show keeps a light and fun tone, unlike the guinea character in Look At Me Only. That one was not as lucky. My Little Goat was uploaded to YouTube in June of 2022, though the short itself was completed in 2018 and was shown at multiple film festivals where it rightfully won many awards. Oh, and I really appreciate that Tomoki shares his creative process on his social media accounts. His Instagram features the models, animatics, and set designs of My Little Goat. It helps to give insight to the production and thought process behind the short, plus his other creations. Honestly, 2022 has been a renaissance year for stop motion animation. You got My Little Goat on YouTube, The House on Netflix, Mad God. Plus, we have Wendell and Wild and Del Toro's Pinocchio on the horizon. And I am here for it. Uh, definitely uh, much more than the garbage that Disney's slinging with its Pinocchio, right? <laughs> so, what is My Little Goat about? Well, it's based on a pre-existing folktale called The Wolf and the Seven Young Goats by the Brothers Grimm. In it, we follow a goat mother and her seven children and how the mother tells her kids not to open the door to their home or the wolf will eat them, that they should only open the door when they hear the soft voice of their mother. Unfortunately, the wolf was able to trick the goat children into opening their door while their mother was away and eats the majority of the kids. The mother then finds the wolf asleep and uses scissors to cut open her children, who are fortunately unharmed. She then places rocks in the wolf's stomach, sews it back up, runs away with her kids, 
and then the wolf falls into the water and drowns while trying to take a drink. The end. For my little goat, it is somewhat the same story, but with a pretty big twist. One that is, surprisingly, much, much darker. It opens with the goat mother removing her children out of the stomach of the wolf. But unlike the original story where the kids were unharmed, they weren't so lucky in this one. The kids bear various degrees of being digested, with one of the children, Toroku, not making it out alive at all. We then cut to the goat mother pulling the hand of what looks like one of her children, though something seems off. She calls the child Toroku, but is it? It looks human despite the sheep-like outfit. This character is then told by the mother to stay in the house. With an unsettling glance, she closes the door, and the child is ambushed by the surviving goat children. Their wool has melted, with some of them bearing more severe scars than the others. But they talk to the human child as if he was their fallen brother, Toroku. They're confused. They're distrustful. And the human child tries to escape, even though the others tell him to stay inside or the wolf will get him. During an escape attempt, one of the goat children accidentally sees itself in the mirror and is horrified by her disfigured body. She then retreats in sorrow and mourns, but the human child returns to comfort her by giving her his own wool outfit. At this point, there's a knock on the door, and the goats think it's the wolf. They hide out of sight, and the mysterious figure enters. It's a man, the father of this human boy. Folks, this is where things take a very dark turn. The father initially seems relieved that he found his son, but then starts to sexually assault him with his form pivoting between his human body and that of a wolf. Obvious symbolism of how the two predators share similar parallels despite their motives. At the end, the mother goat returns and stops the man with her taser. The family embraces each other, and the closing scene implies that the human father was filled with rocks and disposed of in the water. The same fate the wolf met in the original story. Needless to say, this is a tough watch, considering how close to home this hits for people, especially children, and of course survivors. What I initially assumed would be a short that was gory and dark, which it is, added another layer to its story with sexual assault, and that genuinely surprised me during my first viewing. Using the wolf and goats as an allegory for child abuse between the human father and his child was very effective and powerful. It subverted my expectations, but it all made so much sense as the true message of this short made itself abundantly clear to me. The fear of the goat children and how they are vulnerable to the monsters of the world. How they bear scars from their prior traumatic experiences. How they keep up their guard, knowing that there are monsters who still lurk outside their home. And then we see how the human child shares similar trauma of being preyed upon, but in a different way. He has bruises on his arms. He cries out for his mother. He rebuffs his father's advances, only to be punished even more. It's no wonder why the goat children and their mother jumped into action in the defense of this helpless child. They know a predator when they see one. The same way that the little boy could empathize for the goat children and the trauma that they carry from their disfigurement. Utilizing this folktale with such a spin was brilliant. The anthropomorphic characters are universally recognized, as most people know that a sheep or a goat is symbolic of being vulnerable, while a wolf is typically the aggressor. We see that with the goats being children, and the wolf being an adult with predatory intentions. To use these designs and characters and themes, but in the vein of drawing parallels to sexual assault, is an incredibly potent juxtaposition. And visually, the stop-motion animation of the short lent itself so well to conveying the story. The narrative itself is dark and unnerving. Right off the bat, there's a sense of dread that permeates throughout the entire short. And seeing the uncanny movement and designs of the characters helped to reflect that level of uncertainty and terror. The melted off wool on the goat children, the jarring movement of all the characters, and the lighting. Oh my gosh, the lighting was top notch. From the red tent of the mother closing the door to the sunlight later on that beamed into the house after the father was defeated. Ah, it's, it's perfect, genuinely perfect. And it's not lost upon me how the goat children and the human all wear their own covers at the end to hide their scars and are also locked inside the house looking out into a world that is full of light. That their fear of what the world might do to them, which is unfortunately valid, robs them of a life where they can enjoy the world in their innocence. That hits me hard. 
and it's a bittersweet ending to a very good short. Hell, even the mother goes out into the forest with a bear trap to prevent predators of all kinds from hurting her children. She too bears scars. So overall, My Little Goat is a thought-provoking short that is visually stunning and symbolically brutal. Now, despite the uncomfortable nature of its story, it was able to use the power of animation to approach a disturbing subject matter in a grounded but heartfelt way. And it ends on a note of hope with a dash of caution. In conclusion, My Little Goat was able to successfully adapt a folklore tale in a way that utilizes its original message of deception and predation, but in a new light. How being preyed upon takes various forms, whether it be a bloodthirsty wolf or an abusive father. Both the little boy and the goat children are survivors of their own respective trauma and have the scars to prove it both inside and out. They survived, they lean on each other for support, and they persevere in a world of monsters that are kept at arm's length by the protective mother. All in all, My Little Goat is an exceptional animated short that fires on all creative cylinders, and I highly recommend it. I do understand, though, the uncomfortable nature of the short, and that not everyone can easily watch it or watch it at all. And you know what? That's okay. We, as individual viewers, have our own preferences and reservations, and there's no shame in avoiding this short if it upsets a person. For me, I personally can't stomach body horror, and I passed out in the theater while watching Annihilation during the intestine scene. I I didn't like that part, and I closed my eyes, and it did not help. I still passed out. It is my choice to avoid content of that caliber because it makes me uncomfortable, and there's no shame in that. That being said, there's no denying the artistic merit of My Little Goat, and I certainly hope to see more from Tomoki Masato. The guy is brilliant, and I recommend following his social media accounts in order to support his work. They'll be in the description. I also want to make more of an effort now to check out animated shorts since they encompass such a wide range of visual and narrative storytelling that's typically not afraid of treading bold topics. I recently watched one called Fueled by Killed the Cat Productions, and I was blown away. Eh, Maybe I'll do a video about that one in the future too, along with some other animated shorts. It's worth highlighting, and also worth signal boosting these very talented and upcoming creators. So, those are my overall thoughts about My Little Goat. For those who have seen the short, what did you all think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, let's hope that kids on YouTube don't mistake My Little Goat as a spinoff for My Little Pony because that will probably lead to a not a good time. Don't miss the premiere of My Little Pony, Saturday, November 10th at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, only on The Hub. (laughs) So, a big shout out to this video sponsor, Helix Sleep. It's kind of wild to think I've had my Helix mattress for like almost two years now. I love this mattress. And I think you would too. I actually went out of town for like three weeks in September. And when I got back home, I'm like, oh, there she is, my bed. I want to sleep on you. And in the first night of sleep back in my Helix was like one of the best nights of sleep I've had in a very long time. I was like, oh, my bed, my, my gushy, uh, but firm bed. Just take me in your arms. God, this is a sexually charged uh, sponsorship, right? Uh, For those who don't know, Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your front door. They get this cool quiz that you take that matches your preferences and body type to the perfect mattress for you. Do you prefer having a soft mattress? Maybe one that's firm? Do you sleep on your side, your back, on your belly? Tell the quiz. For me, I told them that I like to have a mattress that's kind of like a hybrid, where it's like, it's soft, but not too soft. And also, I sleep on my side. And the quiz recommended the Midnight Helix Lux in queen size. And folks, I love this mattress. It blows my last mattress out of the water. And like I said, the mattress is shipped right to your front door for free in the US. It's rolled up in this box and you, you, (laughs) make sure you open the box in a room that can actually like facilitate the the mattress itself. Cause I did not, I got pinned against the wall, uh, giggity. And uh, just, yeah, just make sure you open it, give it room to breathe. Cause it goes boom, instant mattress. And if you are hesitant about buying a Helix you have not been able to try, hey, no worries, all right? There's a 100 night sleep trial, so you have over three months to try out your selection and make sure that you love it. And if you don't, 
Helix will pick up the mattress and you'll get a full refund. Helix also has a 10 year warranty and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night of sleep is never far away. So I absolutely recommend Helix Sleep. I love my Helix and I think you will too. Click the link down below or go to helixsleep.com slash saberspark and get up to $200 off your Helix mattress plus two pillows for free. And I'm gonna go plop on my bed now, plop.